Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a web-based curriculum in class in. So I showed made a video about using PDF and PowerPoint and Google Slides using the browser and screen share. So this is the last type of curriculum that I see a lot of people using, which is web-based curriculum. So I'm going to enter my classroom. I already have my student in my classroom ready to go. And here's my check to make sure everything's working correctly. And I actually learned something today for deleting in the browser. So I'm going to show you the way that I am going to use my web-based curriculum. But you can use just the standard classroom mode, but I'm going to use the large screen classroom mode. And I will explain why I'm using that versus the standard mode. And you can choose whichever one that you want that is easiest for you. So with the large screen, I'm going to enter. And it's basically the same. Oh, let me turn off my sound from my iPad for my student. So they look the same, except the things that are usually up here at the top right are now down here at the bottom left. So I have my voice check here, my camera check here, my help button. And more is where I will quit my classroom. I have my settings, record lesson, window layout. So all the stuff just move to the bottom corner. Also, my tools are a little different in the large screen mode. I like this because I can move my tools wherever I want them. They don't have to stay on the right side like they do. And I, oh, where'd they go? Here they are. So if I did that and pushed it all the way to the right, I can see it and kind of keep it off hidden, click on it to bring it back. The student cannot see this, so I can move it wherever I want and the student will not see it. All the tools are there the same, but there's one extra tool that is not in the standard classroom setup, which is the undo button. And I'm gonna explain why I want this undo button for my browser. So for my web-based lessons, since these are curriculums that are online, they cannot be downloaded into a PDF or a PowerPoint to be used because they are interactive lessons. Of course, with class in, you cannot use interactive lessons unless you use the screen share mode with a student on a computer. And I will show you that as well. So the way that I do it is with the browser. So on the more or in the standard mode would just be your toolbox on the side. If I open more, I have my toolbox and I'm going to click on the browser. Once I have my browser open, you can go to the page for your curriculum that you're using. There are two main web-based curriculums that are very popular. One is Learnaling and one is Flip the Classroom. They are both excellent choices if you want to check them out and see if you like them. So. The first time I want to go in, I would do this before I start my class because I want everything prepared and ready to go. I don't want to have to fumble around copying and pasting, but I want to show you how to do it first. So you can do this in the practice classroom, the practice, practice Blackboard before class so it's already set up. So I'm going to find the website. I'm going to open it up. So I have this on my other screen so you cannot see it, but I'm going to copy just the URL and then I'm going to go to the URL here on my browser. If you're using the standard mode, it would be at the top. So everything's at the bottom here and I'm going to control V and paste and click enter. Now the curriculum that I'm going to be using is on my screen. If I want to use this again later, I can hit the star and it's saved and I'll show you where that is. So now let's pretend I'm going back into my classroom. I'm going to my browser. It's right here, level two. I can't see the whole thing, but this is the one I just saved. Now, instead of having to copy and paste while I'm in the classroom with my student, all I have to do is open the browser and click. Saves a lot of time when you're going in between classes, especially. So now I have my lesson open. So however setup you want, I now like to make mine large screen and I keep my student and myself at the top. And then I can drag myself down, the student down, make us larger, smaller, interact during the lesson. But I keep me and my student at the top while we're just going through the main part of the lesson, just talking about the words and introducing the vocabulary. 
So from here, this is why I like having this tool that I can move around, make small and big, because if I was using the standard classroom, my toolbox is going to be over here covering my arrow to click to the next slide. And I don't want that covering because then I have to constantly minimize it. But with this, I can move it in a space that's not going to be in the way. So now let's talk about what we do once we're in the lesson, drawing and writing on the slides. So of course, you can use your brush to write on the slides. And if I give my student permission, my student can also write on the slides. But with web-based curriculum using the browser, if I want to go to the next slide, first I have to course change to the clicking and I can go to the next slide, but all of my writing stays on there. And that's a problem if you want to be able to transition quickly to the next slide. So there are multiple options for getting rid of writing. Of course, you can use the eraser if it's writing, but of course we all know that if they use, your student likes to use circles and squares, we know that that does not work with the eraser. The eraser does not erase those. There are some shortcuts that people have learned about using your keyboard. One of those shortcuts is Control Z, which is to undo. And another shortcut is Control A, which highlights everything that is written, and then delete to or backspace to make everything disappear. Those are great if you're only writing on the slide and not doing any clicking. And let me tell you why. So let's say I'm, let me go to my brush, let's say I'm writing, my student is writing, and then I want to click on something. Let's see, I wanna click on this, or I wanna click on this, or I wanna click on this. If I click on something, my shortcuts are not going to work now. So let me try my control Z, did not work. Control A, that just highlighted all the words in the slide, that did not work. In order for those commands to work, those shortcuts to work, first I would have to go back to the brush. Let me try it, Control Z, nope, didn't work. Control A, did not work. Now I have to write again, doo doo doo. Now let me try my Control Z. Now it's deleting everything. So in order for the Control Z and Control A delete to work, you have to A, be on the brush, and B, you have to have written, the last thing that you did was writing on the slide. Well, if you're using a web-based curriculum like this, you're often going to have to click. So if you have to constantly click, brush, click, brush, click, brush, click, brush, click, brush, that is a pain in the you know what. I don't want to have to do that every single slide. So this is what I am doing. Again, you do whatever is best for you and easiest for you, but this is what I find to be the easiest method. So again, using the large screen mode with my little circle, I will stay on the click the whole lesson. I do not have to change it. That way I can click to my slides. I don't have to change the brush at all. So how do I write? Well, I'll just use the writing tool in the curriculum. Both Learnerling and Flip the Classroom have a pen tool in the curriculum. So when I use this pen tool, it doesn't change my tool for class in. I'm still on the click button. Okay. So now I'm writing. The student's still able to write. When I switch to the next slide, my writing disappears but the students doesn't. Well, I don't want to have to go back to the brush and write something just so I can delete. That's a waste of time. All I have to do is click the undo button. Boop. It erases each individual piece that was written. So if the student wrote multiple things, here's one, here's two, here's three, I would just have to hit it three times. One, two, three. If they just write one big thing, I just have to hit it once, but I could click really fast. It's a lot easier than having to go brush, write, shortcut key, back to click, back to brush, write, shortcut key. I am not gonna deal with that every single slide. Way too much work. This is so much easier. Let me go through it one more time. So I stay on the click button. I use the writing tools provided 
in the curriculum. The student uses the class in tools to write. Now I'm ready to go to the next slide. I can just click to the next slide, undo, done. See how much faster that is? Now let me do the other method just so you can see how much faster it's going to be. So let me go back to a blank slide. Okay, now I'm gonna use my brush tool. And let's say I'm writing, writing. The student is writing. Now let's say I need to click on something. This slide doesn't have anything to click on, but a lot of slides have like dragging where the teacher needs to drag. So let's pretend I'm dragging something so I had to click. Now I'm ready to go to the next slide. Well, all the writing's still there. Now I have to go to the brush. I have to write Control-Z or Control-A and delete. And then I have to go back to click if I need to click, back to brush if I need to write, back to click if I need to click, back to brush if I need to write. So you see how that can get really frustrating for you as a teacher, having to constantly click back and forth, back and forth between those tools to either write, click, delete, erase, all those many different things. So that's why I choose to use the large screen mode with this tool. And I really like being able to move this tool around. So the browser is the way most people are going to share their web-based curriculum. You could use the screen share mode. Let me show you that really quick. So for screen share, again, whichever tool system you're using, you're going to go to the toolbox, sharing tools. There are three options for sharing tools. You have desktop sharing and teacher screen share are the two you're going to use. The screen sharing for all students would be if the student is going to be sharing their screen with you, which most of us aren't going to be doing that. So what are the differences between desktop sharing and teacher screen share? Well, the main difference is sound. So Learnaling does not have any videos in their lessons. So you're not going to have to worry about sound. There is sound when you click, but that's not important sound. Meanwhile, Flip the Classroom has a lot of videos in their lessons. So you need the sound. So the desktop sharing, sound is supported. So you can hear the sound. Teacher screen share, the sound is not supported. But in the desktop sharing, I'm gonna show you that. Let's move this over to where I want to share. So I'm gonna bring this over here and I'm moving my green box to where I want to share. And I can make this box bigger or smaller. And you can also move this to the top or the bottom. So I'm sharing this. The student can only see what's in the green box. But this is important to know that I found out through some other teachers that even though they're only seeing what's in that green box during class, the recording, if you record your classes, will show your entire screen, everything around it. So keep that in mind. If you have anything inappropriate writing pictures on your screen, they will be able to see that. So in class, only the green box, the recording, they can see everything. So this is the desktop share. So now I'm sharing with my student. I can share the sound, but notice there is no writing tool. There is no way for you to write and there's no way for the student to write. So obviously that is not going to be a very good solution for your classroom. So let's go to the next one. So toolbox. Oops, I do not want to go to that. All right, toolbox and I want the sharing tools. So now we're gonna go to the teacher screen share. And this one will automatically share your entire desktop, okay? You can change that, but it's going to start off with sharing the entire desktop. So to change what it shares down here, sometimes it's at the top. I think mine's at the bottom because I'm in that large classroom mode, but usually it's at the top. Here, there's a little square, looks like a browser with a check. I can choose exactly what screen I want to share. So I want to share this one. So now it's only sharing, again, what's in the green box, 
but the recording will show my entire screen. So always keep that in mind. But with this mode, I can write on the slide. And as long as I gave permission to my student before I started screen share, notice I can't give permission right now. I can't even click on this to take away permission. So once you're in screen share mode, you cannot take away or give permission for writing. So my student is also able to write on the screen as long as I allow them to draw. So right down here, allow students to draw. Once I do that, the student could draw on the screen. But I have the same issue with erasing. I have to change to my clicker to change the slides. And here I don't have my little circle where I can undo. So I would have to go back to the writing. And then I'd have to write control Z or control A and delete. Also, you cannot move yourself or the student down into the screen to make yourselves bigger. You and the student always stay at the top and small. I can move this around my screen, but for the student, it's always going to be at the top and small. So now I'm gonna exit out of here. So that's why I don't like using screen share. I prefer using the browser because I can move my window and the student window around and I have this undo button that I can use if I'm using the large screen mode, which I am ecstatic about because I think it's gonna save myself frustration and time, not having to use those shortcuts and having to go back and forth between click, draw, click, draw, click, draw. So hopefully this helps some people as well if you're using any type of web-based curriculum or if you're interested in using web-based curriculum, you can kind of see what it's going to look like if you use it in your classroom. Hopefully this helps everybody that's using this curriculum and I will see you soon. Goodbye.